Hi everyone, thanks for watching today as I draw this autumn leaf using colored pencils. I am using Derwent Chromaflow pencils for this project and I'm drawing on Rising Museum mount board, the two ply paper from Legion Paper. And you can see me here, that's an embossing tool that I'm using to indent the paper. And you'll see later when I come back over those areas with my pencil, the pencil won't stick in those areas that I'm indenting, so that's why I'm using that tool. And you can also use a really sharp uh, pencil to indent the paper as well, so sometimes you'll see me do that. But here I'm using this tool, which means the indented area will be white until I go over and um, add some color there. So you'll see me doing that, but I just wanted to kind of point out what I'm doing with that tool. It's a technique I use very frequently, especially when I'm drawing leaves. And basically what I'm doing is I'm just trying to establish a base. And in this first section of the drawing, I'm going to be getting all of the veins marked in and then I'm going to come through with my shadow colors and then I will come in with the midtones and blend everything out and then I'll add the details after I have blended things with the solvent. Here I'm just coming around and outlining the leaf. And you can see I'm changing pencil colors depending on the area of the leaf that I'm outlining. Probably would have been easier if I would have done that first before I started adding the veins. And now I'm coming through with my darker shadow colors and just working my way around the leaf and starting to block in where I see those colors. The first two colors I was working with on this leaf were the uh, Chroma Flow Raisin and I was also using Natural Brown. So that's the brown and then the more reddish color you see there is called Raisin. My set of the Chroma Flow pencils only has 24, but I was really happy to see that within that set, some of my very favorite colors from the Derwent Light Fast range are also in this set. And especially, well, I really like this raisin, but also there's a color called foliage that is one of my all-time favorite greens. And then the yellow that you're gonna see me use in this leaf is also really good, it's called sun yellow, really nice and bright. And then a couple of the reds, the scarlet red, and then flame is more of an orangey red, all really great colors. So within a smaller set of 24, at least the color options you have are pretty much exactly what I would have chosen myself. There's, I didn't use it on this leaf, but there's a pink color called magenta that is just a really beautiful, vibrant, uh, pinkish purple. You can see me here just dotting. I'm indenting the paper with these tiny little dots all over the place. That's just to give texture to this leaf. I mean, right now, obviously, this looks like kind of a mess. This is just establishing this base so that we can come over and add some more colors. So here I'm starting to come through with the brighter colors and I am working with Strawberry and Scarlet are the two red pencils that you're gonna see me using. Scarlet is a lot more vibrant whereas Strawberry is a, a darker red and again, both really good colors. And you can see when I go over those areas that I indented the paper with the embossing tool, now that's not, um, the color doesn't stick there. And I will tone those down a lot as I work my way through this piece by, first when I blend with the solvent, I'll blend into them just to tone them down, and then I come through later and really clean them up even more. So now I'm working through with a couple of orange 
orangish uh, brown colors. I've got burnt sienna and I've got golden sun. That's the golden sun right there, a little bit more yellowish. Drawing this leaf was almost like drawing an abstract within the lines of a leaf. I mean, this is just very different than um, just straight up drawing. I'm really just splotching a lot of color around. In my tutorial that I did on Patreon, I used the word splotch <laughs> over and over because that's pretty much what I did. And now I'm using that sun yellow to come back over everything. And in the places that I had splotched in those other colors, this yellow will get down in and around any of the areas of the paper that I had left white. I can come through and um, put that yellow in and it'll just kind of show through. It's just such a pretty, look how vibrant that color is. I really love that sun yellow. It really just kind of pulls everything together. And that's the importance of the splotching. If I had colored in everything completely, then there wouldn't be any room on that paper, no tooth left to accept that yellow color in there. So now you can see me coming through and I'm blending everything out with the solvent. And you'll start to see how those veiny lines will not disappear completely, but they'll start to look more natural as I'm kind of filling that in a little bit. And also I'm just dissolving the pigment, so this is gonna look a lot more painterly. You're gonna notice here when I finish with the one side, hopefully you'll be able to see the difference between the side that was blended and the side that wasn't blended yet. Um, it makes a really big difference. If you don't like to use solvent, then you just want to continue to work over and over with your pencils until you get a really nice smooth look. I'm just trying to get rid of any graininess. I want texture, but I don't want grainy pencil, a grainy pencil look. And I'm using Gamsol odorless mineral spirits here, but um, any kind of odorless solvent or mineral spirits should work. So see the difference there between the two sides? And now I'm gonna come through and blend out the second side. I'm using a Royal and Lang Nickel number two Filbert watercolor brush that I bought, um, it's pretty inexpensive, comes in a big set of inexpensive brushes, but it is just the perfect pencil for blending the solvent, You are, I'm sorry, the perfect paintbrush. You want something with stiff enough bristles, um, you don't want any kind of floppy brush. It won't get in there enough to really dissolve that pigment. So after the solvent has dried, I come back through, and typically I just come through in the same order that I did initially. So you're gonna see me come back through with that natural brown and raisin again, and just darken up those areas. And as I'm working through these second layers, I'm going to be paying even more attention to my reference image and just continuing to add details as I see them. And you know, with something like this, you just wanna have fun with it. Some of those splotchy areas that I have on the sleeve, they're not perfect to my reference image. I have things, you know, in the wrong place and it's not gonna matter. I mean, unless you're looking at the reference, then you're not gonna know that. So just have fun if you're gonna attempt to draw something like this. These autumn leaves are a lot of fun to draw. They, so many different colors involved. And like I said, really just feels like I'm drawing something almost abstract. I'm not thinking I'm drawing a leaf as I'm working on this necessarily. A lot of fun little just squiggly lines here and there.
I was really happy as well with how um, much coverage I was able to get with these pencils. I wasn't sure how well they would do when I come back came back through on my second layers because um, not all pencils can hold up to that, but they really did a great job. And as you can see, there's a lot of really vibrant color. Yeah, see when I put that foliage on there, how much it's showing up in that second layer. And now coming back through with my bright reds one more time. Again, strawberry and scarlet. I have a piece of glassine under my hand. That's to keep my hand from smudging. I don't want to smudge the pencil onto the white of the paper, so that's why you see me have that. You also saw me use my white pencil there. That was another really nice surprise. I was surprised with how well that white pencil showed up on top of the other layers. And I did use the electric eraser to race up some little bits so it would help it show up even more so. But it worked really well. And now I'm coming back over with another layer of that sun yellow. And you don't notice it a whole lot in the video, the difference it makes, but in person, it really does make a big difference, this second layer of, of yellow. It really brightens everything up really nicely. And then one more time through with the Golden Sun and Burnt Sienna. And I'm using these pencils to really just kind of bring everything together and to add a lot of texture. I didn't want the areas that were yellow to just look super smooth yellow. I wanted them to have this textured look. There are a couple places that I kept it smooth, sort of some highlights, but mostly I was adding, there I'm adding a little bit of texture and shadow. And here I'm working around the uh, veins and just adding some, just trying to tone them down and make them look more natural. And this is the kind of thing that you could continue working on it forever and adding more and more detail, but at some point I have to say I'm happy with the way that looks. Moving on just quickly here to draw the stem. And I used the same colors that were in the leaf. I used raisin and scarlet, and then I also used some foliage and a little bit of the sun yellow. Oh, and some walnut brown on the edge, I think. And here you can see the entire leaf almost finished. I'm gonna come back through and add a little bit of the yellow around that bottom right edge. I used the electric eraser to make sure the color would stick there. Kind of brings it all together. And there you have it, that is my completed drawing. If you would like to watch me draw this in real time, I have a six part video tutorial series over on Patreon, so you can check that out. And otherwise, I will be back next week with another drawing. Thanks so much for watching, bye.